Hey, back with you here, uh, Westchester, Ohio, fired up to be with Nate, got an opportunity to talk with his dad, Larry, uh, beforehand today, and uh, really enjoyed their relationship, and uh, as I talked in the other presentation, so if you're watching both of these, some of this will be repetitive, but some of you might be only watching this one, I really like the concept of what uh, Larry and Nate are doing with ChiefPigskin.com. The, the, I, I still do this, but I don't do it at near the frequency that I would have done it in the past. You know, you load up on Friday morning and you head off to the Coach of the Year Clinic in Louisville or you head off to, to this clinic or that clinic to go do this and you come back Sunday night. Uh, as my children got to be older, I was like, man, I'm going to miss this, I'm going to miss this. And so it didn't become as appealing. So what you can do now with ChiefPigskin.com is you go right in, you pick out things that apply directly to, to your program. I don't want to watch stuff uh, necessarily about all no huddle spread. That's not what we do. That's not what we're going to do. Somebody does it, and I guarantee there are presentations on here that are awesome. We run a wing tee. Uh, we run man-to-man -man concepts in the secondary. We have certain philosophies that we like to do in special teams. So I can go on to ChiefPigskin.com, and I can watch the things that directly apply to, to our program. So I would really encourage you, uh, if you're seeing this, don't just watch it and learn for yourself, but the fraternity of coaching. Share it through your social media site, your Twitter, or however you share your things in social media, and let's continue to promote ChiefPigskin.com. Today's topic, creating an effective and efficient practice schedule. Special thanks, administration, Scott County High School, uh, the first principal that hired me was a guy named Greg Figs. Uh, we had someone that passed away in our community just less than a month ago, and uh, I was at the funeral. I saw Mr. Figs there. I appreciate him giving me that opportunity 21 years ago at Scott County High School, Dallas Blankenship, our superintendent at that point in time. And I appreciate the people from then until today that are in the leadership at Scott County High School. Football is important to our community. It's important to our school. It's important to our players. And as a result, uh, our administration has made a lot of that possible. I appreciate our coaches at Scott County High School, the guys that I work with throughout the season each year. Uh, Monty McIntyre, the defense coordinator, has been there uh, on the staff at the same time I have for 20 of the 21 years I've been there. Scott Willard's been our offensive line coach for 14 years. Uh, Chris Hatfield has coached. Uh, he's retired now. He's our head freshman coach. He's retired from teaching. He still coaches. He's been a part of of Scott County football for 30 years. And I've actually coached long enough now that uh, guys that, uh, Chris Travis, for example, that played for us, uh, then went and played in college at Georgetown College. Uh, now he's a special education teacher at Western Elementary. He's been our D-line coach for six years. So I'm getting a little bit older, uh, but it, uh, my love for football hadn't changed. Also want to thank the wonderful Mandy Hudson. Funny quick story, Mandy Hudson's uh, one of the school technology coordinators. So I'm okay with PowerPoint, not great, uh, not, not the best. So what am I going to do? I'm going to send it to the technology lady who happens to have a son who also plays and say, hey, can you take a look at this and help me? And uh, look, go through it, add some pictures, make it look better. Here's what I'm doing. Of course, she agrees to do it. She sends it back, and, and I'm going through it. And I sent her an email, and I said, hey, man, it's, it looks awesome. Thank you so much. And then I'm going back again looking through it, and she stuck in the wonderful Mandy Hudson. <laughs> so I guess the, the moral to that story is, you know, leadership doesn't always have to have a big L in front of it. Leadership can have a small L and find ways to thank the people that help you. Appreciate my sons. Uh, my oldest son, Clay, called me this morning while I was up here before we got started. He's a senior, going to get ready to play his senior year at Georgetown College. He's a quarterback. Colby's 19. He's a redshirt freshman at Austin P. Shout out to the governors, uh, Coach Will Healy and his staff. Uh, without a question, if you follow uh, college football, the, the big, biggest single turnaround success story this year in college football. They're 8-4 and four and barely missed the uh, 1AA playoffs. Cade, who's 17, is a sophomore at Scott County High School. Here they are. Uh, I had this same picture in an earlier presentation, but there's Colby in the international hat. He's majoring in ag business at Austin P. 
Uh, there's Clay and his Georgetown College football. That's me, obviously, in the middle in a Michigan State hat, which I'm going to have a picture here in a minute that explains that. And there's Cade when he was in the eighth grade. They had just beaten the uh, Georgetown Middle School. He was at Scott Middle, and you can tell how fired up he is to win the Crosstown rivalry game. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so forth. What do you, how many times, what do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish on Monday's practice? What do you want to, do you walk off the field on Monday and say, huh, what do you want to get accomplished on Tuesday? What do you want to get accomplished on Wednesday? What do you want to get accomplished on Thursday? What's your pregame practice look like? What's your pregame Friday look like? Used to drive me nuts after school on Friday to kick off. And I'm going to share what we do now from after school on Friday to kick off that I really like. And it doesn't drive me nuts anymore. It's something that I feel is extremely beneficial. Uh, so that's what we're going, we're going to cover. We're not going to get into, which I'm more than happy to get into with anybody as I'll share my contact information at the end, you know, the, the exact scripting of the plays, the rotations of the rounds, what we're going to do during the block period that we're practicing. What I'm talking about is what's your overall practice plan from the, the first week of the first game throughout the conclusion of your season. What are you going to do each day? Very brief history of our school. Uh, I got there in March of 97. I've completed 21 seasons as the head coach there. Uh, it's a growing community. Our school has about 2,600 students in it. So the complexion of our football program and our roster have obviously changed. Uh, we have more players now. We will typically have somewhere between 120 and 130 players in our program, 9 through 12. So we do two platoon our staff and our team. And I do believe in two platooning. Uh, but I also believe in this. One of the highest rated offensive linemen in the nation this year is a rising senior. is a kid named Brian Hudson that plays for us, and he's, he's an awesome kid, and Mandy's actually his mom. And, you know, he's got, got all those offers that you're just amazed at and, and blessed. But I just kept, you know, I, I, we don't have very many Brian Hudsons come through our school. So I'm not going to let him stand over there with me on defense. So we're going to play that kid both ways. We had another kid, Glenn Covington, played wide receiver and defensive back both ways for us this past year. So our, our basic belief is two platoon, our staff two platoons, and we're going to individualize a practice schedule for somebody that might not be a total two platoon player. Uh, awesome picture at the bottom. Just want to uh, always trying to take opportunities to – Think of ways to promote your program and to involve others. That's after we won the regional championship this year. Uh, we defeated a school named Douglas out of Lexington. And those are our cheerleaders and dancers in, in there in front of that picture. So just remember that kind of stuff. When you win that big game on Friday night and you want to want those cheerleaders to make that run through for you for the next Friday, include them in what you do. Here's some things you need to think about, guys. When do you do what? When are you going to lift? I was talking to a guy once, and he said, well, well, once the season starts, we don't lift. And I'm thinking, brother, I mean, we're, not, we're going to get stronger during the season. Why would you want to work from January to August and then not lift? But, I mean, I'm, maybe that worked for them. When are you going to lift? When are you going to watch film? you got three kinds of film you got to watch during the week. you got to watch Friday night's game film. You don't have to. This is the film we watch. you got to watch Friday night's game film. You got to watch film of your opponent and you got to watch practice film. So, when are you going to do that? When are you going to get the JV team some extra time? Now, when you play against a really good program, I told a story earlier about playing Elder. We played Elder JV game in 2016. And so we head up and we're, we're warming up for that JV game. And I look down there, and, and Coach Ramsey's a class coach, and his coach, you know, they got that book up showing those scout plays for, you know, what we're going to do on offense. I've played uh, against a lot of schools in JV games where you look down and it's very obvious that the coach is putting the kickoff team together 10 minutes before kickoff. That's not right or fair to that kid. That kid deserves an opportunity to go out and play in that JV football game and have an opportunity to be the very best football player he can be. So do you have any plan in your weekly practice schedule to get the JV team some practice time? What's your pregame format? When are you going to watch practice film? And, and that's something that I would 
take 30 seconds and stop and say, guys, if you're, if you're not filming any part of your practice and you're not taking advantage of what huddle can do for you, whew, you need to do it, man. You need to do it. Uh, and many, many other things. And we've changed and changed this. This will be my 22nd year now. We're pretty comfortable with what we're doing, but we, we've tried a bunch of different ways to get where we are. I heard this at a clinic once, and that gives, gives me to, or, or makes me want to say this to you. You're going to say, okay, well, we don't platoon, so I, I'm, I'm turning off this presentation. Guys, this, this roadmap that's on this PowerPoint, it's not going to work at your school. You can't take it to your school and lay it down and make it work. Your school's your school. My school's my school. The school down the road's the school down the road. Find one or two things, put it together into what makes, makes it work for you. We used to do an activity with, in regard to how to practice, and we've continued to do this activity on different topics, not as much as how to organize practice, but start, stop, and continue. And I picked it up at a clinic in Cincinnati years ago, and I don't even remember who presented it. But I will we'll sit down with our staff and say, guys, you got five minutes right now. Three things we need to start doing. Three minutes pass. Write down three things we need to stop doing. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm bad about getting to games on Friday nights a little too late on the road. And it was driving my assistant coaches nuts. Why? They're the guys setting up the kicking net, setting up the headphones, getting the water off. Uh, getting the sideline benches set up, unloading the extra equipment, and they're saying, Coach, man, we're, we're freaking out in there. You know, we're getting the headsets up and rolling uh, uh, two minutes before kickoff. So we tried to stop doing that. And what, what's three things that you want to make sure we continue to do? We did this activity. Start, stop, continue, and then go to your whiteboard, write them all down, maybe pick out one thing that everybody agrees on, or for the most part agrees on that we need to start or stop and continue. We kept doing that activity related to how do we need to practice and set our week up until we eventually we got into the position we're in now. When you're going to lift, when you're going to watch film, when you're going to watch game film, opponent film, when you're going to practice a JV, when you're going to do pregame, when you're going to watch your practice film, so on and so forth. What are you going to do on Monday? People are creatures of habits, and I'm not going to throw our guys curb. Some people say, man, you got to keep practice fresh. You don't want to do this, and, and, and I'm going to enter it. Our practices are very similar day to day, week to week. We're going to do A on Monday. We're going to do B on Tuesday. We're going to do C on Wednesday. All right? The, the, the format the kids are comfortable with, the energy that you bring to that practice, that's, where, that's what makes the practice great. You can change up, you know, the drill work, but you got to bring the energy to make it great. So what are we going to do on Monday? Guys, here's what we're going to do on Monday. Monday before school at 7 a.m., our starting DBs and one or two top subs are going to come in and watch the Friday night game tape. 7 a.m. with the defensive coordinator, a guy named Monty McIntyre. He coaches the secondary. Now, you're going to see later in here that the D-line and linebackers are going to watch their film at a different time. Why 7 o'clock in the morning? That's what works for Monty. Guys know it in the secondary. That's when they're going to go. Okay? We're, we're so lucky, and I don't want to get off topic too bad, but uh, uh, chase one little rabbit. If you don't lift weights during school and you don't have the opportunity to sell your administrative staff on that, you still can be strong. You still can win games. But we are, I, I can think of a couple programs in our state in Kentucky that don't lift a, a, a barbell during school, never have, and they've won a zillion games. But we're lucky in that first hour, we're, we're going to carry uh, upwards of 100 people in our first hour weightlifting class. So first hour on Monday during the season, we're going to power clean. 7 a.m., starting DBs, top subs. First hour, we're going to power clean. What are we going to do after school on Monday? Well, we play freshman games on Mondays. Some people play them on Thursday. Some people play them on Saturday. In, in Kentucky, in our area, we play freshman games on Monday. We play the majority of our JV games on Monday. So we're going to feed our JV and freshman guys their pregame meal, depending upon the distance of what, where they're going to go and what they're going to do has a little bit of a, of a determination in what we're going to do with them. Our JV guys that are on special teams only 
which I, if you don't have any of those at your school, then you got more better players than we have. You know, we're, we're going to have a guy that, that might be on kickoff return or kickoff uh, or PAT that's also going to play in that JV game on Monday. Those guys are always going to practice special teams with the varsity and a helmet only. So then the varsity is going to practice. That's what's going to happen every Monday during the season. Before school, film, power clean, first hour, play freshman JV game on Monday. JV guys with specials on specials are going to practice in the helmet only, and the varsity is going to practice Monday. Here's a varsity Monday. So right now, this is the overview of Monday. I'm not going to show the play scripts, all right, for example, for this Monday, but I'm going to now talk about what's going to occur during the varsity practice on Monday. All right, boom, school's out. Down they come. I've got a loud voice. I'm, I'm, I'm fired up. I'm ready to go. I'm getting everybody where they need to be. And, and keep in mind, pet peeve, but don't send them to where they need to be and then set up the equipment when they get there. Have everything ready to go. If the, you know, we'll do a little study hall if they are playing at home with the JV guys and so they're set up in a certain place and the freshman coaches are, uh, you know, getting ready to go eat their meal. I'm pushing everybody where they go on the varsity. I'm pushing everybody on every special team into the film room for a review of Friday night's game and a coach is sitting there ready to roll. That's ASAP after school and I'm pushing everybody else out, meaning out onto the practice field. Now, we have highly motivated assistant coaches, uh, meaning if I don't give them a practice schedule or tell them what to do after school on Monday, that doesn't matter. They already know, and they're out. The D-line coaches is standing out there waiting on the practice field, and I'm pushing the varsity D-lineman that might not be on a special team out there to him, and he's immediately getting going with them on what he's working on. But anyway, so school's out, boom. Freshmen are eating. JV or or watching film, or maybe into study hall, depending on their distance, getting ready to do their uh, pregame meal. We're going to review special teams from Friday night, 30 minutes. I don't have my stopwatch. It's laying over there, but that's the limit. And literally, boom, I say, Coach, Coach so-and-so, Coach Nate, are you ready? Coach Nate, are you ready? Are you gone? I'm gone, Coach. Boom. I hit the watch, and, and I'll go in there after 15 minutes, and I'll say, Coach Nate, you're halfway through. And he knows at 30 minutes, he's done. So he better have watched his film and have his evaluation ready. During that 30 minute time period, the other guys that aren't on specials are on the field working with their position coach. Out we go to practice. Pew. People say, well, special teams, do it this way, do it that way. Do it however it works for you at your school. Don't complain about it on Friday night when it gets you beat if you don't work on it. This is what we're gonna do. 30 minutes of film on the practice field, one hour, on my stopwatch is special teams practice. Now, obviously, we've got it typed out and we've got a format and a sheet that we're gonna follow. So, have you ever seen, seen a, a, a team have no idea how to field a pop-up kick, for example? Well, hey guys, freaking get on your practice schedule on Monday and script that in. Okay, we're working kickoff return. We're gonna work one deep left, one deep right, one middle, pop up left, pop up right. We're onside left, onside right. You know, so we're gonna go one hour of nothing but special teams on Monday. We're gonna give great effort. Uh, we've got it divided up and it's already typed out. Everybody knows what their role is during that time period. Uh, and, and including some coaches will spend the whole time period working with a scout special team or working, you know, uh, just, Get after your freaking special teams right after school on Monday. So we're an hour and a half in right now on Monday, and we've done nothing but special teams. 30-minute film review, an hour special teams practice. Boom. Split offense, defense right there. What we're going to do on offense is time plays. I don't, I'm, again, the words never and all aren't, aren't great words to me because there's exceptions to a lot of rules. For the most part, we don't condition our players once the season starts. And you know why not? I freaking hated it when I played. I'd get on the line and I'd have to say, oh, we got this many gassers. I'd just be like, oh, man. And uh, so we just do all, try to do all our conditioning time in our plays on Monday. So we're split offense and defense. 
and I'm going to have a script of somewhere between 70 and 100 plays that we're going to time on air on offense. The defensive coaches are going to introduce a game plan and do all their individual work. So there's Monday, and we're going to rinse it and repeat it every Monday. Review. What we're going to do on Monday? DB's going to watch film at 7 a.m. Don't bring the JV DBs in at 7 a.m. to watch the varsity film. Forget those. I used to try to do that. But every, it's not everybody. Those guys are more fired up about their JV game than they are Friday night. First hour, we're going to power clean. Monday after school, Frost JV, varsity practice. Varsity Monday, 30 minutes on the film, an hour on the specials on the field, split offense and defense, game plan individuals. Right now you're saying, well, what about the uh, what about those two guys that go both ways, Coach? What about the three guys? Uh, next year we got to – I might go with three guys both ways next year maybe. Um, I'm going to always let them go to defense. And I, and I call the offensive place. And I've been the offensive coordinator for years. But if it's push come to shove, I'm, uh, offensive football is like putting golf, which for me, since I've only played putt-putt about five times in my life, it's terrible. But offensive football, you're going to be hot and cold. You're not going to be great every Friday night on offense. You better be great every Friday night on defense. Tuesday, before school, all the defensive starters and the top subs are going to arrive at 7.30. Coach McIntyre is going to have already been there. The huddle's set up. The video's ready to go. They're going to spend 45 hard minutes on opponent video. Boom. We're going to break. They're going to go to school. The majority of them, and... Uh, there's, there's always an exception to the rule, and, and we, we make it work for that person. But obviously, the majority of them are going to come right to me first hour, and we're going to do parallel squats. Tuesday's a tough day, all right? It, it, it's a tough day in, in every high school football program. So before school, all defensive starters, top subs, 7-38-15, opponent video, first hour squat. Got a picture of my man Glenn Covington there on his squats, one of our two-way guys. So here we go after school. Boom. Same thing. I'm greeting them coming in the door. Now, they pretty well much know where to go because it doesn't change a lot from week to week or year to year, but I'm putting them where they go. ASAP specials video of the opponent. So the cut-up's made. The coach is ready. Hey, Coach Nate, you ready, baby? Let's go. So I'm pump, pumping all those special team guys in there. All right, and he's not going to have very long during that time period. I'm going to give him no more than 15 minutes to cover Something about the opponent and what they do special teams-wise that we need to know. 90% of what we're going to do special teams-wise is going to be executing what we do. If we're as good as we can be, it doesn't matter what they do. But they might do something unique, have a unique formation on punt. Maybe the, it's a swing and gate team on PAT. So just something we need to cover. Right during that time period, the JV offense, I'm, I'm pumping those guys out. JV out, JV out, JV out. In a helmet, start running plays. So I got a coach out there waiting. So keep in mind now, what are you going to do with your JV guys on Tuesday all during the day? They're going to be scouts. And are you going to get mad? And I got mad at a kid one year, and, and, and uh, you know, I always have just paper plays. I'm hitting him on the shoulder pad, trying to fire him up with a bunch of papers. My papers blow everywhere. But I got to give him something to get back out of him what I need. So I'm saying, hey, JV offense is out, and they're going to be out there running their plays like crazy. The rest of the guys that aren't in the specials are with their individual uh, position coaches going over things and doing things that they need to do, waiting on the video to end, then we'll fall in for team flex. Practice. Rotations and scripting. Uh, I can't get into all the rotations of the practice and all the scripting of the plays in my opinion, in, in this format. I can do that at my high school if you want to come, and I can share that with you on email. So then what we're going to talk about is what are we going to do post-practice. So again, here we go, Tuesday. Let me take you through Tuesday. Before school, those defensive guys are watching film. First hour, I'm banging those kids like crazy on squats. Right after school, we got that special teams video going. We got the JV out there running plays. We got people with their individual coaches. We're going to go through our practice, and as I just shared, you know, our rotation and our scripting, I would be glad to share with you at the right time, but, but that's not right now. Then we're going to hit post-practice Tuesday. We're going to grade the practice tape. So the offensive coaches are going to go in, and they're going to grade. And when I say grade the practice tape, for the most part, now the defensive guys are going to do a little, they, they sometimes will film some seven-on-seven. Seven. But what we're going to make sure and do is film 12 to 15 plays of our team period. 
we actually do it on a large step ladder from behind rather than set up an end zone camera. We just, the ladder stays right there by the field. The ladder goes up, the coach goes up, he's got the camera, boom, he films it, he goes straight in. When, when I walk in and as the kids begin to leave and the practice is winding down, the stuff's already loaded on huddle and ready to go. So we're going to grade that practice tape, offense, defense. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, before school, same thing, 7.38.15, varsity defense is in. They're going to watch that practice tape from Tuesday. They're going to watch their opponent film. First hour, we're going to bench press. All right, we're going to do all upper body. Shout out to Mandy Hudson. She's got those pictures put in there. That's me in the camo hat and the long sleeves and the Crocs. I mean, I'm in there. I love to get in there with those guys in the weight room. Uh, I'm not as strong as I used to be, but I'm not weak for 48. I can still do a few things. Uh, so for, before school, 7.38.15, varsity defense, practice tape, opponent film, first hour bench press. After school, bam, same thing. I'm standing right there at the door saying, let's go, let's go, let's go. Varsity offense to the film room, review Tuesday's practice. JV offense, out running plays, everybody else with their coaches. Same format as Tuesday. Same practice format as Tuesday. You know, as far as what we're going to do, individuals or timing-wise, round one, round two, special team period, it's exactly the same. The only thing that changes is the focus of the day will change. We're a wing T team, so we're going to do buck and belly on Tuesday. We're going to do down, quick pitch, complimentary plays on Wednesday. So same format as Tuesday, and then remember to grade the practice film. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday before school, defense watching Tuesday's practice tape, watching opponent tape, bench pressing first hour, after school, varsity offense watching Tuesday's practice tape, JV running plays, defense with coaches, practice, grade to practice tape, Thursday. Now, here's how this came about. My oldest son, Clay, who's 22, would have been how old in the sixth grade? Well, let's see, all my boys were held back, like 13 maybe. So he's about 13 years old, and he has his first sixth grade football game on Thursday. He actually didn't have a sixth grade team. He's playing on a seventh grade team. There is no sixth grade. So sixth, seventh combined to make a seventh grade team at Georgetown Middle School. Steve Burke's been over there for many years, does an outstanding job, uh, the, the Buffaloes. So anyway, I mean, I'm freaking trying to get through with the pregame practice to get to his game. And so I remember walking in, and they're playing Woodford County, and I'm coming in, and he's running the ball. And I just said, man, I can't stand this. I'm missing these games. And so I, I racked my brain, racked my brain, and here's what I came up with, and it's been one of the best things we've done. Thursday before school, the varsity's coming in for pregame practice. For us, in the time we start school, as long as we're on the field moving at 7 a.m., it's, it's perfect for us. So, again, guys, I'm not bringing everybody in. I'm bringing the varsity in, and they know. And I'll even go, you know, and, and say to them as a group when they're on a knee in front of me, hey, Garner, you're good. don't need you thirsty before school. McKee, I do. Uh, Larry, go get the subways. Uh, you know, so on and so forth. And in comes the varsity. We go, it's no more than an hour on the practice field, about 45 minutes. It's over with, and boom, we go straight into two film rooms and review Wednesday's practice film. All right, so before school, varsity pregame practice. Upon completion, we review that practice film from Wednesday. We go to first hour and power clean. Now, after school, JV practice only. Guys, I cut the coaches loose. I've got one particular guy. Coach Davis has come a lot, but... Coach Willard, for years, uh, he, he loves, he just loves coaching. He's the head baseball coach, too. And I, I bet if he hears his presentation, he'll say, I'd like time off, too, Coach. But I just have never felt like that he minded being there and he would want to be there. So after school Thursday, in comes a JV only, myself and one other assistant coach. I've let the other guys go. You know, they're going to go spend time with their families. They're going to do whatever they're going to do. So, and then the JV is going to be in Thursday after school just with me and another coach. So I'm going to get to work with a guy who is third team and he's in the 10th grade. I'm going to spend an hour and a half or so with him. 
So they're going to watch their game film from their game on Monday or Saturday. So we got two film rooms set up. They're going to watch those films. All right? Then they're going to go out and they're going to work on all their JV specials and they're going to work offense and defense. And I'm going to be right there with them. We can do the whole thing in an hour and a half. I like to be done. I like to always be started by 4, be done by 5.30. And then I'm not rushing like I was when I was trying to have varsity pregame practice after school on Thursday, work with the JV and get them ready for Monday's game, wait on, you know, 85 people to get their rides, and then race to the middle school. Now I have found that I've got plenty of time to get to the middle school game on Thursday. The JV guys are watching their film from their JV game. They're learning how to watch film. We're coaching them up. We're, we're realizing what their strengths and weaknesses are as we draft where they fit in the future. That's what Varsity Thursday looks like. Varsity Friday, before school, nothing. First hour, oftentimes we'll bench press in first hour. Uh, and some people say, oh, coach, you can't bench press on the day of the game. And, you know, if we're playing in the regional championship, probably we're not going to. But if we're playing an early season game or a game against an opponent that we feel really good about, it, I, I believe that a, I, I don't have the scientific research to prove this, uh, but I believe that a 17-year-old kid can bench press at 8.30 in the morning and by 7.30 that night, there's no ill effects of it. Now, we don't do any burnouts with them or uh, extra stuff, but we keep them going uh, in the weight room on Fridays. If it's a huge game and we don't want to do that, we'll spend Friday morning getting equipment ready. Here's a time I used to hate after school on Friday till kickoff. What do you all do at your school? Send them home. Well, then you can't get somebody back. Keep them around. Two guys are acting like a fool down in the locker room. All right, uh, you're, you're fidgeting everywhere. Some guys, uh, you know, reporting in late. So there is no, so, so I'm thinking, okay, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? And we talk, we talk, we talk. Our guys love this. We come in our school on Friday. The varsity guys go straight down with the coach in the locker room. They spend about, now if we got a long away trip, obviously it's going to change, but the majority of our games are close. You know, they're going to spend 30 to 45 minutes. We're going to clean their helmet and shoulder pads. They're going, we get the spray stuff out. We get the towels out. We want the helmet all cleaned up. We want the cleats all cleaned up. We want the shoulder pads cleaned up. Okay. They're going to get their uniform. They're, they're varsity only. They're feeling special. Those, those 30 or so guys, then, that, then they're going to go head up to their pregame meal. What are the JV guys going to do like that? We're going to lift like crazy after school on Friday. All right. With me. I'm going to get super fired up, and we're going to lift like maniacs after school on Friday. Okay, so the varsity guys are down there getting ready for the game. The JV guys are freaking going crazy in the weight room. As soon as I see that first varsity guy start walking up to the meal, I'll take the JV guys down and start handing out their gear, and then we'll walk up to the meal uh, later. It, it, in, in making a synchronized machine of a football program, Okay, don't feed 83 guys at the same time in line standing over two moms that are putting the sandwiches together. Okay, let the varsity guys go up and go through the line and get their food. Let the JV guys come up afterwards, then have your team meeting on Friday in the auditorium. Okay, so Friday after school. That's one thing I've always said about winning playoff games and making runs in the playoffs. You get so much extra time with the guys that are coming back on your team to get them stronger and bigger and better football players. So that's Varsity Friday. Friday post game. Grading the game. Everybody has their part done by the time they're responsible to show their respective film. That, I mean, I trust my guys. And uh, they've either coached with us for a long time or they've played for me. But football, Scott County High School is important to every one of them. And I know that they're going to, I mean, if I ever had to have a conversation with a guy about how he's grading his practice tape or game tape? Yeah, sure, but for the most part, no. Here's some options, grade after the game. Uh, I know if I need to go on Saturday to watch one of my sons play college football that Saturday and it's gonna be a drive and I'm gonna be completely committed all day on Saturday with no time to grade any film, I'm gonna grade it after the game, all right? Some people grade it on their own in their chair uh, on their iPad. Some people grade it on Saturday. Some people get up early on Sunday. It doesn't make any difference to me when they grade it. They just better have it graded and ready to roll on Sunday. Uh, we, I stuck a grade sheet in there where we've got 
a plus minus system. There's Friday post game. Saturday, I don't particularly like JV games on Saturday. Uh, well, I like to play them on Monday and give everybody Saturday off. But to get a complete JV schedule for our guys, we've had to play some Saturday JV games. Up here in Ohio, which is where we're doing this clinic, they play almost all their JV games on Saturday, and, and they love it. But if we have a JV game on Saturday, I take them, and I take one other coach with me, and he takes them, and we handle it, and I give the rest of the guys off. Uh, if no JV game, I give the whole staff off all day on Saturday. If a JV game, I'm going to give the JV only guys off on Monday. Uh, I, think the J, I think the JV needs one day away. Uh, so are all the varsity guys are totally off on Saturday. Why? I don't know, guys. I just think they need to recover. I think they need an opportunity to sleep in or work a job, watch college football, uh, do, do whatever they want to do. And, and we really like that. So Saturday, we're off. Sunday. Talk about efficiency of meetings. Uh, I used to sit in on a lot of our defensive staff meetings. And I, I typically get to church most every Sunday, especially during the season. I like the structure of that day, and, and I need to get in there and, and be thankful and try to help make myself a, a good person, better person throughout that next week. So we weren't really starting anything to about 1230. Well, I, I just, you know, I could sense the guys. So conversations with them. Bottom line, defensive staff comes in at 9 o'clock in the morning, all right, and they, they do all their work 9 a.m. Sunday on the opponent. Now, they can't complete the game plan by the time they go home, but they're close, and the defensive coordinator will complete it the rest of the day, Sunday and Sunday night. So I'll come in about 12.30, 1 o'clock on Sunday, linebackers and D-line, varsity only, come in and watch their film. Okay, got two film rooms, 1 o'clock Sunday, you know, and guys are going to go to church, and that's great. And we're going to work, but we're going to work in between church time. Somebody said, "Well, you, you know, what are you doing? Work, work? You can't work on Sunday." I said, "Reggie White was one of the greatest ministers of all time, and he played about 500 games on Sunday. I think we're good as long as we're in between times. So we're going to work at one o'clock linebacker D line film. At two o'clock varsity team lift, varsity only." I'll let a JV guy come in and lift if he wants to, but for the most part, varsity only. Why? He said, Coach, why are you doing a team lift? You lift every day in weightlifting class. You can't, that's true, but I want to get them in there as a unit because you got to understand with 130 players in the program, a guy playing defense and a guy playing offense might not have a huge amount of interaction throughout the course of the week. I want those top 30 to 40 guys in there busting it for an hour and a half in the weight room on Sunday. 3.30 Sunday, the, the defense goes home. Any defensive players that are there go home, and the offensive film starts, and the offensive practice starts from 3.30 to 5 on Sunday, and at 5 o'clock, the varsity offensive staff meets. Now, I'm going to go back over this, and, and there are going to be parts of it that you're going to say, Coach, doesn't work, won't work for us. Here's what I'm going to say to that. When are you going to lift? Lift whenever it works for you, but lift, lift. When are you going to watch film? Have a designated time to watch film of Friday night. Have a designated time to watch film of your opponent. Have a designated time to watch practice film. When are you going to practice your JV time, your JV team? Have a designated time to work with the JV team. All right? I'm not saying anybody, and I don't, I don't want to take this the wrong way. It's harder to be good at football for a long period of time than it is to have one really good team with a bunch of good players. It's still hard to do that. It's still, you've got to manage personalities. You've got to do a thousand things. But our goal is we want to be good every year. So when are you going to practice your JV? What are you going to do pregame? What's your format? When are you going to watch your practice film? Have answers to all those questions. Monday? Before school, film, power clean, freshman JV, varsity specials practice. Remember the format of Mondays, an hour and a half on special teams. Tuesday, watch your opponent video. Hit the squat rack right hard. Challenge your kids. Tuesday's tough, but you're going to do it. After school Tuesday, watch your specials video. Run your JV plays. Have your practice. Grade your practice film. Wednesday, watch your practice film and your opponent film before school. 
bench press, review your practice tape, steal extra time with your JV, grade your practice film after practice. Thursday, get in there before school, bring the varsity in there. Get after it, get with them, and make them as good as they can be before school. First hour of power clean. After school, work with your JV. You'd be amazed how many guys will play, and I'll look up, and they've got no camera at a JV game. Film your JV game. Load it into huddle. That kid wants to make a highlight film just as much as the senior quarterback. Varsity Friday, nothing before school. Sometimes we'll bench press in first hour. After school, remember, we're splitting varsity JV. Varsity guys clean up their uniforms. As soon as they start heading up to the meal, JV guys are going to come out of the weight room and go do that stuff. Play your varsity game. Post-game Friday, grade your film, whatever manner you want to. Saturday, give everybody off if at all possible. Sunday, follow some type of format. Now, you can email me at coach.mckee at scott.kyschools.us. I would love to share actual practice schedules, formatting, play scripting, things of that nature. I would close in this, and, and I could do it. As a head coach, I, I could do a good job of this. I could say at, you know, 5.05, we're rotating to period B. At 5, 5 whatever. And I'd still do time stuff with how much we're going to watch film and how long we're going to practice specials on Monday. But our Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday work, I never even look at to watch. It's all on a script. Everybody's got the script. The kids know we're on a script. And we're banging everything as hard as we can script-wise to get through our practice the most efficiently uh, possible way that we can. Uh, any questions, comments, or concerns, hit me with them. Uh, looking forward to hopefully chiefpigskin.com continuing to be successful, uh, growing. You can follow me on Twitter, which I'm going to tweet some stuff today about chiefpigskin.com. And right now, I'm going to take a lunch break. We're done.